Okay, so today we're making uh, ciabatta or ciabatta, depending on how you say it. Um, so the first step is we're going to um, put all the flowers um, and the water in. Um, the starter doesn't go in at this point. But we're going to auto lyse that for half an hour and mix that up, and then we add the starter in the second step. So um, I'm not going to show you that. I'm just going to do that, and then we'll go over to the mixer. And you're just mixing this until it is only just mixed. So it's on a really low speed. And it's just going to mix it. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit of dry stuff at the end. There we go, so here we go. It's only just mixed. So look at that now. So we're going to leave that for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and then auto lies what that does is it's where the water activates the outside of the grains and then it starts to digest itself. Uh, hence the name auto lies. And it's going to break down things. So it's going to make a lovely smooth loaf. Now we're going to cover this with a tea towel so no rubbish gets in there. And then we're going to come back in half an hour. So now this is auto lies for half an hour. We're going to add the starter in and then we'll put it back onto the mixer and um, it'll really add the hydration to it. Look how frothy that is, Freddy. Yeah, I know. It looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah. It smells really yummy too. Thanks. Okay, so this is super runny dough for the key batter. So this is about 78% hydration or so. Um, as you can see, this is seriously wet dough. So we're going to fold it the best we can. You'll see it come together even in this first set of folds. We've got olive oil on the bench, olive oil on my hands. You can already see the structure of the dough coming together from that first pour out when it was mixed. And the outside's getting glossy and holding together. Keep doing this first set of folds, then we'll oil the bowl and stick it in the bowl. You see, it's a different fold technique, it's just a matter of rotating it and dragging out a bit in the end. We get to this sort of nice, but very sticky dough. There you go, so it's getting somewhere. We'll see you after the next one. Don't. Okay, so this is the second set of folds. This is after 30 minutes. And it is loopy still. So it's the same technique as last time. Just, you can see it's not sticking to the bench like it did last time because the gluten's already nicely developed. And it's been sitting in an oil bowl, it makes a big difference. Just stretch and fold it over. Again, you can see the gluten developing, even as we go through, you see the dough forming really well. So even though this is a really wet dough, it's not that scary to deal with until once you get used to it. Just got to give it a go. And 
the people in the background, they're, they're obviously, they follow instructions about being quiet. Wow. This is a professional operation. Yeah? I'm being quiet. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, look at the way that's coming together now, though. That calls that. So, and then flip it over. <laughs> Dunk. Look at that. Okay, so this is the 60 minute fold. So the third lot of folds. You can see it's really coming together now. I love how the dough you can really see the dough ball forming again between the 60 minute fold and the 90 minute fold is when you get the biggest difference. Look at that. Look at that runny stuff that came out of the bowl an hour ago. You can really see why these folds are good for developing gluten. Not sticking to me anywhere in here as much either because it's turning into dough. Okay, so we'll do it upside down, back in the bowl. See you in 30 minutes. Hi. Okay, so this is the 90 minute folds. Last set of folds, and we'll rest it for 30 minutes and shake them. You can see that the dough has really come together quite well. So it's nowhere near as sticky. The gluten's beautifully formed. But it's still a wet dough. You can see that. This almost resembles a normal hydration loaf coming out of the mixer. And this has had three sets of folds, but we've got good structure. Oops. Can't push it anymore. So that's where I'll stop. Beautiful. Should I stop now? Yep. So, so that's all done after Two hours of proving and folding and the like. So now, oh my goodness, that's great photography. Near the fridge. A retard over there. Okay, it's next morning. So this has been overnight. Look how much that's proofed, even though it's being retarded in the fridge. So, what the plan is now, is I'm going to take this and it will be warmed up um, for an hour and a half or so. I like to warm up on top of the coffee machine, uh, put a board between those so it doesn't get um, too warm. Okay, so I don't have a, a cloche, so what I do is, yeah, these are wine bottles on a tray, and just muslin cloth with heaps of flour all over it. And so just make sure it's really well floured because it's going to stick otherwise. Now yeah, over here. So what we've got is we've got our dough in here. Now we're going to try and get it to come out very, very gently. We want to keep as much gas in our dough as possible. And I don't think I oiled this bowl well enough. So that's okay. We just you want it to pour out. Now it's coming out okay. You don't want it to rip because that degasses it. And I'm going to keep all that beautiful gas in there because that's what gives the big bubbles of ciabatta. Okay, there we go. Um, and it's a really well flat bench because this stuff, it's sticky. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it into a rectangle. 
try and start from the middle. Um, and we're trying to go to one and a half, two centimetres thick. The side we've got up will eventually be the bottom. Um, so we're going to flip this as we put it onto the tray. We've got to use plenty of flour. I'm going to have two very different loaves the way I'm looking. I'm trying to get these to stretch to the same thickness without mucking it too much. There we go. Now, again, more flour. Now, with my dough cutter, the flour of the dough cutter, put it all on the edge, I'm going to cut into two loaves just with a downwards cut. And if I'm going to degas it. Now, we're just going to put it on over here. So we're going to carefully grab it, put it over here, put it into bed. This one over here too, put it into bed. And now I'm going to move my wine bottles to support the edges. <laughs> Look at the difference in these ones. This one's got big bubbles. I probably handled that one too much. That's okay. Um, it'll probably be okay. There we go. So push them over. Then I'm going to. Ah! There we go. So keep those edges nicely supported. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let that rest. Uh, an hour, hour and a half. Here we go. Okay, so it's getting ready to put in the oven. You see, I folded some baking paper. Uh, it's folding half and the wings folded out. And this isn't the tray I'm going to use, but it allows you to cook two side by side without them sticking together. That's a bit tricky. So the burger here, off. we have it's proof for uh, a million hours. And before I flip it, I'm going to take out all of my um, round objects that I'm using to support the edges. It's like a magic trick. And then I'm going to take my piece of um, paper, and I'm going to push this one down in between. I'm going to feed that groove into that groove. It's going to keep these two loads lovely separate. And then this is my transfer tray. I'm going to fit that over there like that. And then, what the heck could go wrong here? Uh, all I'm going to do is flip this completely and utterly the other way up. So it's best if you fold all of the cloth like that. I'm going to keep the weight and flick it over. Like magic. Then unwrap it without dropping it. Hopefully. Get my hand onto the tray. And then reveal my beautiful things. Now we'll go around to the oven. Okay, I've actually got flour on my shoe. <laughs> um, so in the oven, I've preheated everything. I'm going to turn my tray around so I can easily slide it on. And then in a single motion, hopefully, I'm going to slide it onto my tray. That was multiple single motions, I like to call that. And then we'll turn it back around the other way. You can see the tray holds too beautifully. And now the boiling water. Now it's 250 uh, to heat it all up, but then I'm going to turn it down to 230. And we'll bake this sucker. Okay, so five minutes is up. Oh my goodness, can't see. <laughs> Steam glasses. So I'm going to take the water tray out. Look at that. And now I'm going to rotate the loaves just 180 degrees in the oven. So we get a nice even cook. You can see that one thing. 
move it that way a little bit. The airspace between. Okay, so that'll take another 20 minutes without steam. full time and right. mm. so on the paper. Right. There we go. And now the magic tablecloth trick. And then that to Jebata. Okay, so this is still very, very hot, but it's the only. Oh, look at that. Look at those holes. How tasty do those holes look? Yummy. Yeah, I mean, but the holes won't taste like stuff. Because it's This is too hot to be cutting, but it is also so good to eat. Yeah, but how hot. Oh my goodness, it is really too hot to cut. Okay, I'm just going to cut these things. I'm going to wait for it to cool down a bit. Look at those. <laughs> Yum! Mm, smells so good. <laughs> <laughs>